everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me for another missing video. If you are new here, hi, my name is Casey and I post a new video every single week on a missing person case that needs more attention. I mean, absolutely no harm in doing these videos. I am simply trying to spread awareness and if you would like to support me and see more videos from me, as well as updates on the cases I cover, please consider hitting that subscribe button. The video I have for you today is on a case that I believe got a lot of hometown attention, but not a lot of national exposure, and it really should have. So hopefully this video can help get the story out there more. Anisha Catherine Murnane, who more commonly went by Duffy, so that is what I will be calling her throughout the video, was a 38-year-old woman living in small town Homer, Alaska. Duffy was a very quiet and shy person. She mostly kept to herself, and she didn't have a ton of friends because she was so introverted, but she was always kind to everyone. She was a genuinely nice person and was also known to be very responsible, very routine, and she kind of stuck to what she was familiar with. She loved to read, and she was a preschool teacher. She had had several teaching positions in Australia Australia, Honduras, and more recently at a Montessori school in Seattle, Washington, before moving back to Homer, Alaska. She obviously loved kids and enjoyed teaching and guiding them. Duffy was very close to her mother, Sarah Berg. They were more like best friends and never went more than a couple of days without speaking to one another. Duffy did have a history of some mental health issues. She had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but she was taking medicine for this and doing very well. She was currently living in an apartment at the Main Tree Supportive Housing Complex on Main Street in Homer. Now these apartments comprised of 10 residential units with an employed staff that monitored the residents daily for things like taking medicine, meals, and I believe they did night checks to make sure everyone was safely in their unit. So Duffy was doing okay. She was looking for a new job and had also been looking for new housing. She wasn't planning on being in supportive housing forever. She had goals and things she was looking forward to. She was planning on traveling to Mexico soon as well. On Thursday, October 17th of 2019, Duffy had an appointment at the SVT Health and Wellness Clinic scheduled for 1 o'clock that afternoon. So she set out walking from her apartment on Main Street at around 12.15 p.m. She did not own a car, so she walked everywhere she needed to go, and SVT Health and Wellness was only about a mile away from her apartment, so it wasn't very far. Maybe a 20 minute walk or less. Now we know when Duffy left because Main Tree Supportive Housing where she lived did have security cameras and they have her on surveillance footage leaving at 12.15 p.m. But what we do not know is where she went after this or what happened to her. Duffy never made it to that one o'clock appointment and she has not been seen since she left her apartment. When she departed her residence, she was wearing a blue jacket, light blue shirt, and blue jeans. She is almost 5 feet 11 inches tall and around 160 pounds. She has shoulder length brown hair and blue eyes. She was carrying a pink and black plaid purse with a shoulder strap which held her wallet, cell phone, and identification. Duffy wears eyeglasses on a regular basis and her ears are pierced. For some reason, none of the staff at Main Tree Apartments noticed Duffy didn't return, or maybe they did notice, but if so, they didn't do anything. Duffy missed five medication checks, two meals, and she was gone two whole nights before a staff member finally reported her missing on October 19th. A silver alert was issued. She qualified as a missing endangered adult because of her mental health history. Alaska State Troopers, the Homer Volunteer Fire Department, as well as the FBI organized a search of the local area with around 50 volunteers to try to find Duffy. They were checking wooded areas behind the businesses, dumpsters, culverts, outbuildings. Aerial searches were done by helicopter and by using drones, and during one of the aerial searches, police saw something blue near South Peninsula Hospital. 
It was the same color of the coat Duffy was wearing. From the air, they thought it looked like a person, but when they did a ground search, it ended up being a junked car that someone had rolled down a hill. They continued a massive search. People were on the beaches searching with ATVs. They checked the ferries, the airports, and even border stations at the Alaska-Canada border, but there was no evidence she had left the state. Although she usually walked everywhere she went and was never known to take a cab, they did check with taxi drivers just in case, but none of them reported giving her a ride. Anchorage search and rescue dogs were brought in and they picked up Duffy's scent from Main Street where she lived to Lee Drive, Svedlin Street, Pioneer Avenue, and Kachimak Way, which is the route she would have taken to get to the appointment. Search dogs followed the scent to the Pioneer Avenue area near businesses Cosmic Kitchen and Homer's Jeans, which is only about 500 yards away from the medical clinic. There, the dog stopped. The scent ended, and this is what search dog handlers call a car pickup. If the scent stops in the road like that, it means the person they're tracking likely got into a vehicle. Police asked businesses along the stretch where she walked as well as residents to check their security cameras, but no one reported seeing her on their footage, and some that may have been able to catch her walking either were angled in a way that they weren't facing the road or they didn't have tapes or recordings of it. I guess it was just like a live feed, which what good does that do? I don't get that. Why have cameras at all if you can't go back and watch it in case something happens? Duffy's iPhone had last pinged near mile marker 170 on the Sterling Highway, also known as Baycrest Hill, which is almost five miles from the area the dogs lost her scent. I'd say it's about an eight minute drive. I'm not sure what time her phone pinged there, and I'd be really interested to know that because that could help establish a timeline. Did her phone ping there right after she would have been picked up, or did more time pass? If you know that bit of information or can find it, confirmed somewhere, let me know in the comments or please email me the link. That area of Baycrest Hill where the phone pinged was searched, but they did not find Duffy, her phone, or any sign of her, and I don't believe dogs were able to hit on her scent there either. Also, when they get pings like that on cell towers, it's not a definite location. I believe it is just telling you that the phone was within a three mile radius of that spot. Police did check her emails, social media, and bank records, but didn't find anything useful to the investigation. Her bank accounts and credit cards have had no activity since she went missing, and she hasn't been on social media either. She had airline tickets paid for and in hand, but they were never used. She wasn't dating anyone at the time, and one of my first thoughts honestly was, maybe she met someone online and they lured her away, but I don't think that's it. If she had left out of nowhere with no one knowing her plans for that day, okay, maybe I could go with that. But she had a doctor appointment that day, and that is where she was headed. She left only about 45 minutes before her appointment was scheduled. That doesn't leave extra time to plan to meet and hang out with someone along the way, in my opinion. Also, there would likely have been some evidence of a relationship on a computer or her phone records, and I don't believe they found anything of the sort. Friends of Duffy's knocked on doors and handed out flyers. Hundreds of tips came in and police checked into each one. Her mom even asked people via social media to check their land, to go out and walk around to see if they could find anything. Now, East End Road, where the clinic is located and where Duffy had been walking and her scent ended, is a busy road. It is lined with businesses, and on a Thursday afternoon, I imagine traffic would be steady with lots of people being out and about. How did no one see anything? No one saw her get into a vehicle? No one saw someone grab her and force her into a car, if that is what happened? 
And why would she get in a car with someone when she was that close to her destination? She was only about 500 yards from the SVT Wellness Clinic. Maybe five to seven more minutes of walking and she would have made it there. Homer, Alaska's estimated population is around 5,800 people. It's a smaller town. Everyone pretty much knows everyone, and before this happened, it was considered relatively safe. Duffy was born and raised there, so she was well known to a lot of people in Homer, so I wonder if Duffy could have gotten into a car with someone she knew. She was a timid, shy, and cautious woman. It isn't believed that she would have gotten into a car with someone she did not know. Maybe someone she was familiar with pulled up and got her in the car with them by offering a ride to the clinic or by some sort of ruse, maybe telling her there was an emergency, using her kindness against her somehow. I've also wondered if maybe someone from the apartment complex where she lived was involved. Did they see her walking or follow her and get her into their vehicle? Now, I am not stating this as fact, okay? And I haven't seen this reported anywhere. I am totally theorizing, but it really bugs me that they didn't report her missing for two days. Why? Was there a reason? Did they purposely want to buy time? Or were they simply just that negligent? It is not believed Duffy left and never returned intentionally. She didn't pack a bag. She didn't take anything from her apartment. Like I said, she had been filling out applications for jobs. She was supposed to be going to Mexico to visit her mom and stepdad while they were staying at their vacation home. And this trip was coming up in like a month, I believe, and she was super excited about it. There was also another venture planned to visit friends. She already had the plane tickets for both trips. Police have ruled out the possibility of her getting lost or disoriented because of an injury or illness. They also haven't found anything to suggest she was suicidal or depressed or wanting to harm herself. She was in a good mental state and everything seemed great. Her mom has even stated that everything was perfect up until that day. If she had harmed herself or gotten hurt somehow and wandered around Homer confused until she passed away, they probably would have found her body. In May, almost six months after Duffy disappeared, cadaver dogs searched the Homer city limits, but to no avail. They didn't find anything definitive that would lead to where Duffy was. With no concrete information coming in, Duffy's family did talk to several psychics and one said that she could possibly be in a town with the word river in it. That led them 88 miles away from Homer to a place called Funny River, which is a small rural town with a population of about 1,300 people along the Kenai River. Family searched along the roads there, but nothing was found. This case is pretty much at a standstill. It is an open investigation, but there isn't really anything happening. There hasn't been any new information or leads in quite a while. That's one of the reasons I really wanted to cover this case. Police really need someone to give them some useful information so this can be solved and Duffy can be with her family. If she has passed on, her family deserves to know for sure and be able to give her a proper burial. The not knowing has to be just excruciating. They need to know what happened and be able to say goodbye if she is gone. I myself believe the same thing her family believes and that is that she was abducted. I don't believe for a second she left on her own. I feel like she was taken and is possibly being held or was harmed. If she is being kept from returning home, I hope and pray she isn't being hurt and that she will be released. If she has passed on, I hope her remains can be found. Her mom has stated that she feels Duffy is gone, that she is dead. My heart aches for Sarah Berg, Duffy's mom. I mean, no matter how old your kids are, they're still your babies. And to not know where they are and what could be happening to them and to feel that they aren't alive 
none of us can imagine that kind of pain. There have been walks and vigils organized to remember Duffy and to help bring awareness to her case. Her family and friends don't want the people of Homer to forget her or stop looking. She is so very missed. People that know her have planted blue flowers in their gardens for her because blue was her favorite color. A year after Duffy's disappearance, her mother made another public plea for information, which I will play for you now. A year ago this month, my 38-year-old daughter Duffy Murnane left her apartment midday to go to a doctor's appointment in Homer, Alaska. It was a one-mile walk through downtown's houses and businesses. She never made it. What happened to her? Where is she? Many want to dismiss this as her own doing, saying that she took off by her own choice. Indeed, if not for relatives and friends fighting for her, Duffy's disappearance would have been treated as such. We know better. She took nothing from her apartment, used neither of her airline tickets, followed up on none of her five job applications, and has used neither her phone or her credit card. Duffy did not leave of her own free will. She was taken. No clues have been found, and the culprit moves freely about. We hope he is not planning an encore. This town and this family have endured enough. We don't know what horrors my daughter endured. Do we want to see this happen again? Duffy was a sweet, shy, loving Montessori teacher, adored and so missed by her family and the many families that she touched through the care of their children. So many children in this town and others refer to me as Duffy's mom. We are realists and are thankfully very sure she is peacefully dead. We cannot and do not want to imagine what horrors she would be enduring if not. No parent could bear it. We need the body back with us to complete the cycle so we can fully grieve for her. I want to run my fingers through her ashes. I want to be sure. Where is Duffy? Somebody knows something. She did not evaporate. Please keep your eyes open and your ears. Don't dismiss those questionable comments. If you think you saw something or heard something or know something, no matter how small, please call the Homer Police at 907-235-3150. Please, please help us find her. If you have any information on Anisha Catherine Duffy Murnane's whereabouts, what could have happened to her, or if you know who is responsible, please contact the Homer, Alaska Police Department. I'll give you the number again, 907-235-3150, or you can submit an anonymous tip online. I will put a link for that in the description box, as well as the link to the Bring Duffy Home Facebook page. Please share her flyer, share this video if you think it will help, and don't let Duffy be forgotten. Thank you all for watching and helping me to get Duffy's story out there. I appreciate y'all so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss when I upload. Also, check out my entire missing playlist. All of these cases I cover need more attention, guys. They aren't getting the exposure they deserve. And I really, really want to help some people get home. That's it for today. I will see you guys next week. Bye.